So in this video, we're going to walk through how to set up a .NET Core 2.2 application and how to add application insights. First, we're going to launch Visual Studio Community 2017. File, new, project. I will select web and then select ASP.NET Core Web Application. I will name this test app for video. I'm also going to say create a new Git repository. This is just going to allow us to add source control. So you'll be able to see anything that's being changed when you add application insights. I'm then going to select web application with an MVC model view controller. And we'll click OK. Now that our app's created, we want a quick test to make sure that this demo app is working and that we can also launch it via IIS locally. So let's run IIS Express. So as you can see, we have our app working. We've got a privacy page. We've got a home page. I will say that when I was first setting up uh, .NET Core with Visual Studio, I did run into some issues where the integration isn't quite as tight as I'd want it to be. So if you were hitting an error when you were trying to run IIS from here, just go and leave a comment on my blog and I'm happy to walk through a video of or put a post up of some of the troubleshooting you can do there. And the first time I tried doing this, um, I realized that there were some components I was missing that I thought I had from the native .NET Core 2.2 install that actually weren't installed. Once I got those, everything worked. So we'll stop that site. And so what we want to do to add application insights, we're going to go to project and then say, Add Application Insights Telemetry. I'm going to click Get Started. So it can see my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription and it's creating a new resource for me. I'm going to go and click Register. And you can see we've now configured Application Insights. We've added it. To see what's actually changed, if we go over to Team Explorer, and let's go and check on changes. We can go and see any of the things that were changed as a result of us adding App Insights. So we can quick peek at one of these. We're not gonna look at all of them, but this is just so if you want to go and then change things, so you can see it created a instrumentation key and it then added that to the app settings JSON file for me. It also made some other changes. We'll quick scroll through them just so you can see, but. I would recommend looking at more closely yourself if you're really interested. You can see also what it's doing here is it's adding client-side monitoring automatically. What you see here is the client-side JavaScript being inserted into the head of every page in your project. So what this is doing is think of like those Google Analytics uh, tracking snippets that you might add. Uh, to your pages, this is the Application Insights equivalent. And so by adding this, what you're really doing is adding in the Application Insights um, client-side JavaScript SDK. And so that is open source as well, that you can go and take a look at the repo on GitHub and look at that code, but it's just simplifying that process for you and adding that right in. And in the case of this particular .NET Core project, the underscore layout CS HTML file is what's going to control um, what is in the head of each page. So rather than having to go to each of the individual pages and make that change, it's going to do it for us. Uh, we can see we also, if we look into program.cs, we have a .use application insights method being called. And if we look here, we can see as well um, that we're adding in some package references um, to those files there. And also that we're adding this item uh, for connected service. Um, just useful to have because this then makes it really easy to roll back. If you want to remove application insights from your project, you have a record of everything that was changed. Uh, certainly with this type of test app, it's not as big a deal. But if it's your actual project, it's nice to know anything that was changed. One of the first things you want to do after adding it is making sure that you have the latest version of the SDK because what ends up getting bundled with Visual Studio is a reflection of kind of that time when Visual Studio was packaged up. And it's not always as robust as I'd like it to be as far as Visual Studio going and getting 
new built-in uh, packages as part of that add application insights experience. So if we go here and we say manage NuGet packages, we'll make sure we're looking at NuGet.org and we can see that we do in fact have some updates to this SDK. So quite a bit of updates that have happened. We're going to go and we there's also beta releases that are out. So if you had wanted to, you could say include pre-release and you would see the latest betas. Uh, for this, I usually recommend going for latest stable. It's useful to know what um, what functionality is in the latest beta releases and in the pre-releases. So if you want to track that um, on the GitHub page for the ASP.NET Core application insights repo, you can check the changelog.md file and you'll see all the things that are fixed and what they're working on in the beta releases as well as what has changed in the stable ones. Go back, we're going to say update. And we can see all those updates flying by below. We will say okay. We'll say I accept. And perfect, we are now on the latest release. So what we can do very quickly right now is we'll launch our app and we'll show you a little bit of telemetry going across to App Insights. So we have our site up right now. We're loading a little bit slowly. And we can go back and forth between these two pages and Application Insights is going to register those requests. So if you look, you can see this Application Insights telemetry right there. And if we go and do another move of those pages, if we go from privacy and back to home, we should see some more happening down in here. So yeah, you see another uh, telemetry item that went by. So what I'd like to do now is show you what that telemetry going by in the portal looks like. So if we go back to our application insights config, we scroll down here, we're going to see open the web portal so we can go and launch Azure, but you could just go to portal.azure.com and then go to application insights. And so what we will do is you can see any of our recent applications. So if we go to this little light bulb in the corner and we put video in that title of our app, so test app for video. And so usually there's about a two to three minute delay before you'd start seeing things here. So you do see we've got a server request here. So a little bit has come through. The easiest way to see if things are coming through is go to live metric stream, which is going to be within one to basically one to three seconds of the telemetry coming across, you should see it here. So if we go and here, make this a little bit smaller and well, and drag this over here so you can see and we're going to give it just some requests and if we watch here you can see those incoming requests coming through now i tend to find that's not as interesting as just having a little bit of more of a synthetic transaction so i'm not having to click back and forth here so what we're going to do is we'll copy this path and that's slash home slash privacy so i'm going to bring powershell up And let's show the script pane. There we go. So we'll say while true, dollar sign true, because we're working in PowerShell. And we'll do some curly braces. And what we want to do is invoke a web request. And we'll give it a URI, not a URL in this case. And we'll paste in that. So basically what we're saying here is just, hey, for an infinite loop or as long as this is running, I want you to hit this page. So let's go and hit play there. And so you can see now we're getting a bunch of traffic uh, coming through. And you can see the responses being kicked back to PowerShell. But this gives us a nice way to be able to test and see data going across without us having to physically interact with this. To make it even a little more interesting, what I want to then do is I want to see some errors. So like right now, 
we do not have any error messages. I can probably force an error message across by just giving it a path that doesn't exist. So if we put like a slash two here and we look, it, now it's actually able to handle that. So it's a little bit smarter, but if we then do, let's try a slash two there. There we go. So we got a page computer found and we've got a failed request there. So if we want to make things interesting, we can go and copy this. And so let's say a certain number of the time we want to have a failure, not every time. So let's use PowerShell has a pseudo random number generator. So we'll do a variable for rand and say get dash random, which is going to get us a random number. And then let's say if um, rand is evenly divisible by two. So if modulus, if rand modulus two, and then equals zero in this case, if we want just uh, even numbers. And then we'll say, if that happens, then we want to go and uh, we need a end curly brace there. From there, what we want to do is do another invoke web request, kind of like what we were doing before. Um, and then this time, it's going to be for that failure URL that we just created that's completely bogus. So we'll say stop and we'll try running that. Let's make this just so it matches up and looks the same. And so what you're seeing is every once in a while, so every time we get back a random number, that is evenly divisible by two, then we're going to go and it's going to throw our little error page and we should see an error coming by. What we aren't seeing though is a high frequency of errors going through. So is it, let's try running just that to see if I made an error. I did make an error. So positional parameter, I need a dash there. And so that is why we were seeing an error, not because we were periodically getting it. And let's just make sure that this, we're now getting, yep. So that's the 404 not found. So in that case, we had one that was not. And so now we can run this. And so maybe about 50% of the time we're going to get at an error. And the rest of the time, we're going to see our incoming request coming through our request duration. You can also see we're getting, at the moment, we're not getting any performance counters. Um, it's telling us that this is not supported in the .NET Core SDK. This is not actually true of the latest versions of the .NET Core SDK. If you look through here, I believe we will find that performance counters. So yeah, so performance counters for ASP Core running on Azure Web Apps. So if we were on an app service app, uh, we'd be getting performance counters and we can go up and see, we've got some performance fixes. I believe they were also adding in performance counters for the new beta versions of the SDK, but I'll have to go back and check that. But for right now, officially from what it's saying in the change log is only for web apps. But we have our traffic going through here. We have our newly updated Application Insights SDK. And this is basically just the how to get started. So we're going to stop here, but hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of how you can go and get initially things up and running, how to add in the SDK. And we're also gonna have a video that shows you how to do this if you don't have Visual Studio. So if you just wanna wire this up manually, and that will be the next video in this series. Thank you so much.